So hello everyone and welcome to our next Manta Talks. Uh, today we will discuss how to improve business agility and gain market share with data lineage. And after a short introduction by Marek Pikna uh, on data lineage, our partner Gary Alleman from Master Data with Mandrik Kotze from Capitec, who is our joint customer, will discuss how the lineage improved their business agility, streamlined the migration process and took apart the complexity in their data processes. Uh, throughout the webinar, we will cover real-life use cases from the Capitec Bank, and you will see a live demonstration of Manta's unified lineage platform. And as mentioned, our speakers today are Manrich Kotze, a team leader of data governance at Capitec Bank, uh, Marek Pikna, customer success manager at Manta, and Gary Elleman, managing director at Master Data Management. And that is all for the introduction. If you have any questions for the speakers, please use the chat that you can see on the slide. Okay, Mike, it's all yours. Thank you very much for the introduction, Carolina. So as Carolina mentioned, my name is Marek Pikna and at Manta, I'm responsible for handling the customers from technical side of things, ensuring that they are properly implemented. And today we'll also be discussing how that, what the results of that improvement implication, not implication, implementation really were. So today we'll be getting a very quick quick introduction to data lineage just to set some, some basics that we'll be discussing the entire time then. And then I will be giving the words to Gary and Manrick to really discuss their actual specific use cases, specifically at Capitec, with respect to business agility and how data lineage has helped them. And then we'll be taking a look at live demo of Manta. So data lineage itself is the, uh, in very simple words, the full map of data, pr data processes across systems within an environment. Lineage showcases how data flows, not just inside one system, inside a database, like what tables is located in, what views are then picking up from there, but really how the systems interact together and not just where the data is going, but also what happens to the data, how is it transformed or if it even is transformed. And through that, it is possible to immediately have access to information, which is really difficult to obtain otherwise and enable digital transformation projects. The way that Manta scans work or the way that Manta provides data lineage is that it scans the environment. It connects to various systems. So it connects to databases, it connects to ETL repositories, it connects to reporting solutions. And it first of all extracts metadata in these solutions. So we extract the definitions of tables, we extract procedures, we extract packages, but more importantly, Manta also understands the relationships between these objects, really what they do, how they refer to each other, what views are built on top of what tables, which procedure take the data from where, which ETL workflows pick the data up, how do they transform it. And through this, Manta creates the lineage graph showing both at the same time where the data flows and also what happens to it. So afterwards, it is completely possible to work interactively with the lineage graph within Manta. I would denote some of the, let's say, key features of Manta or benefits that it provides. One of those is that Manta is a fully automated solution, meaning that all of the scanning of later lineage is done completely automatically. Like we often have questions such as, um, how did you get this lineage? And tr truth is, it is really done through automated scannings. Manta also comes with powerful APIs, allowing further automa automation capabilities. And Manta also enables you to see the data transformation logic, which was exactly what I was highlighting. Through Manta, you can definitely see exactly what happens to your data, which is really important for business agility, for data engineers, for everyone, really understanding what the data is and what happens to it. Manta also enables you to see conditional lineage to really see the, to filter on the environment, understand it properly. See historical lineage, which we'll actually take a look at during the live demonstration to better understand how the data is changing over time. Not just the data, truly the data lineage pipelines. And through all of it together, Manta enables you to have very accurate impact analysis with 
complete journey of your data, truly end to end, understand where it's coming from, where it's being used, and how and where the data is being consumed. And now I would like to give the words to Gary. Hi, Marek. Sorry, we did seem to lose the uh, connection briefly. I suspect if Manrich also went down that this was due to the international connection. So, so apologies about that. Let me pick up. I'm Gary Allerman from Master Data Management. Um, what does it mean to be a business agile organization? So our customer Capitec are the largest digital bank in South Africa. And what they pride themselves on is the ability to respond and adapt quickly to new business challenges. Um, as an example, where other banks in, in, our, in our country are busy closing down branches, uh, Capitec has been expanding their branch network. So they have a, a truly a dual channel um, model and that's really driving their data challenge. When we look at business agility, this really allows us, to, you know, at, at a high level to, to adopt quickly to market changes, which is one of uh, uh, Capitec's key differentiators, um, also to manage risk, and then to respond rapidly and flexibly to customer demands. And really, these were some of the drivers that, that uh, we engaged with to allow us to, uh, or that uh, Capitec engaged with to allow them to uh, or, or that caused them to invest in uh, Manta. I wanted to ask, so Gary, specifically from your experience, the business agility, um, definitely Manrick will be able to tell us something from his experience, but how often do you see with your current customers? Do you think that this is something that would really go towards their interests as well? Well, I think that, you know, absolutely. So we're all struggling. I mean, I think COVID is, a, is, the, is the classic example that all of us will be able to relate to over the last year and a half of total disruption to the traditional way of doing business. And those of our customers that have been able to adapt, you know, to work from home to their customers' new shopping habits and new business habits, more online transactions, more digitalization, these are all business agility challenges. And, and some businesses have adapted really well and others are, are struggling. So, you know, the ability to, to adapt to what's going on in the world and make your business succeed in spite of what's thrown at it is really quite an important feature. Right, would you say that you see this kind of, let's say, a trend that understanding being in control of data pipelines is something that really ensures the capability to, let's say, stay on top of these digital transformations? Yeah, so, you know, what I'm seeing certainly in South Africa and, and probably it's true worldwide is there's been a shift over the last year and a half to cloud first. So that means the data pipelines are moving into the cloud. People are looking at more data and data analytics and data science are becoming more important. So absolutely the ability to, to manage your data pipelines is critical. I see we've got Manrich back. Hi, Manrich. Um, Hi, guys. How are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Apologies, Apologies for the technical for delay. Yeah, tell us tell us a little bit about Capitec and your role there, please, Manrich. Well, hello everybody. Uh, Manrich, nice to virtually meet everybody. Um, currently, I'm the team leader for the metadata management portfolio in the data governance space at Capitec. Um, we are about a year and a half into our program, um, and program meaning where we're rolling out metadata management across the enterprise, um, and it's probably been yeah just 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 short of a year and a half since we've implemented Manta, and um, currently we've got a we've got a hybrid environment, meaning we've got we've got a cloud-based uh, cloud-first strategy, but we still got a lot of data assets um, alive on-premise, and we're moving towards the cloud, meaning we're detangling stuff off the on-premise environment into the cloud. Um, we've got a very complex environment on-premise, a lot of systems producing data, and um, we utilize Manta to, to to plug into all of these systems that produces data and all the, also our data warehouses where a lot of the magic happens. And, and we utilize Manta initially, the use case was more based on a compliance angle for radar, um, but we had a, a end goal in mind to to utilize Manta to add a lot of business value, which is what Captex is all about. Um, keep, keep it simple and add business value. Um, Initially, the use case, as I mentioned, for radar, um, we utilize Manta to to show to the SOB 
our, our data flows within our environment from from the source where the data is orig originates from into the reporting layers, et cetera, and other downstream usages like models and so forth. So the, the main use case was to showcase technical data lineage, um, but also in an automated view, um, an auto automated manner of meaning as we plug in, we can pick up the changes and we'd be able to showcase the lineage as is, um, instead of manually adjusting the lineage. Um, Manta, Manu, in that you, mm. can you tell us a little bit about that technical environment? What, 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 so what are the sort of core technologies that you were working with in that radar environment? Yeah, exactly. So the core technologies was SQL based. It's a lot of SQL, SQL databases where we plugged ourselves into, and then also a micro, Microsoft appliance BDW, uh, a parallel data warehouse, and then it was Power BI, SSIS cubes. Um, and once we started extending um, our, once we acquired Mercantile, which was our business bank uh, division at the moment, we it was mainly Oracle based. So that was the the main technologies, Gary. Okay, so you started off in the Microsoft stack, and then you had to bring in the Oracle environment sort of quite quickly after that. If I remember correctly, we were in production within about three months initially, and then how long did it take you to bring on the Oracle stuff? It was easy. It was actually, started. we've got an agile way of work, so it actually took us about two sprints, which is four weeks um, from okay. the, our requirements building and then plugging it in through through our SDLC. So it was actually quite easy because Manta's got the connectors set up. It's just up to you as a client to to ensure that you've got your security requirements in order and aligned, and then you'd be able to plug in. And you know, once you got that working, I understand, and you've mentioned this already, that you, you're now moving towards a cloud-first strategy. So how is Manta helping you to, to meet this new business requirement? You know, naturally, over the years, um, we've got a lot of IP sitting in, in, in our, on our on-premise data warehouses, a lot of store procedures where you've got business logic entrenched and embedded within the scripts. Um, and Manta allows you to be able to identify what some of these reports or models or in-state procedures that produces reports, et cetera, is dependent on so that you can identify what data from a source point of view actually need to have in the cloud for you to rebuild that, remodel, et cetera. Um, so in short, Manta allowed us to, is, is still allowing us to understand and detangle that on-premise environment and enables us to identify the source data required to, to build specific reports or models in a, in, okay. in a very much a quicker fashion than it would be to do it manually. And when you first selected Manta, did you know that, that you were going to use it for all of these multiple additional mm -hmm. use cases that, that you've discovered as you've been moving along? We um, remember we our North Star was always to add business value, right? So um, to enable us to do quicker impact assessment, to understand what is the downstream impact of any data changes. That was initially our, our core use cases and obviously radar from a compliance point of view. Um, and also to identify what data in our environment is, is deemed as critical. That was the main theme. And then mm -hmm. um, Gary, you know, a year and a half ago, we never really actually knew we were going to acquire uh, Mercantile. Well, we weren't aware. And then suddenly we needed to extend our product to Mercantile and and that allowed us meant allowed us to do it quite quite quickly um, and and flawlessly. So that helped. And then the end the end goal was also for Manta to allow us to um, detangle our on-premise environment quicker, so that we can sort of um, move into the cloud quicker. Um, instead of it taking years, we shortening the time quite dramatically. Oh, thank you. So where else do you think that Manta might add value in the future? Um, so yeah, we we a lot of a lot of organisations um, they've got their own sort of manual built-in data catalogs and um, report catalogs. So what we've utilised Manta for as well um, is to extend the product to our Power BI servers, um, the SSAS cubes, SSRS, etc. So we're building a enterprise report catalog, which is. Um, entrenched and embedded with our way of work from a data governance and um, front-end engineering and data engineering point of view. And it allows us to create a business environment for reports. Um, it allows us to 
get our business stakeholders involved um, and build out this report catalog so that they can really own their own reports and it drives a ownership that it drive it helps drive the ownership model as well um, and it enables business to really embed their knowledge and make it available for other users as well it, it there's a lot of other benefits in there as well where you could easily now go and search for something and it's it's an existing report already instead of rebuilding a report which which is already an existing one uh, so it just cuts down the redundancy of reports and it allows business people to align their efforts so so if i'm sort of summarizing or hearing what you said to me you started off and you were able to solve a risk a risk problem a compliance problem quite quickly you then were able to adapt quickly to, to the market change the acquisition of mercantile and the implications of that and now you're really using the tool for competitive advantage in terms of enabling the business to become more data driven. Exactly. Yeah. And it's uh, is, it's is obviously any... it's it's a program, right? So we're um, we're embedding a lot of our principles and standards and and processes. But what's nice is we're really getting buy-in from the business as well to to entrench their knowledge knowledge into into these reports and into these catalogs that we're creating. Fantastic, Manrika. That's fantastic. So, is there anything that you'd like to to add uh, as we wrap this up? Um, I reckon um, from a from a tooling perspective, the the implementation was was quite seamless. Um, it really allows you um, to to keep keep up to date with all the connectors that's available. So, we've got Manta embedded and implemented within our own infrastructure. Um, which which enables you as a customer quite quite a lot. Um, it helps you to keep up to date, as I mentioned, um, and it allows you to quickly extend. Um, you're not dependent on bare massive teams to manually update. Um, so it helps you to be scalable. Thank you so much, Monday, for your time. And uh, I'm going to hand over and let uh, Marek show people what Manta actually looks like. Perfect. Thank you very much, Manrik, for um, the let's say the inputs from directly end user experience. Um, of course, it's definitely nice to see Manta Lolly, but it's also something completely different to hear this exactly coming from somebody who's using Manta. So let me share my screen and let's all of us take a look at exactly what Manta is, what Manta looks like and some of the small things that we can actually do with it. Although I'm saying small things, I would say like few things. There's of course many and they're actually very impressive and large, but there we go. So right now we are taking a look at the initial view of repository of Manta right after logging in. We can see um, essentially anything that Manta is somehow scanned directly within the environment or somehow seen referenced. Of course, if we wouldn't have certain technology in our environment, Manta wouldn't see it, we would not find it here. For any technology, let's say Oracle in this case, we can go through its physical contents based on what Manta has seen. So Manta has seen a server called ORCL, which underneath has four schemas. And the schemas, of course, are various tables underneath, various procedures, various packages. And for all of these objects, we can drill down all the way to the attribute level. If we want to visualize a particular object, we can easily select it, drag and drop or double click. And what I would really like to mention here is that Manrik was really highlighting that a critical point of why to get Manta was really getting the business value. And of course, the business value makes complete sense for all of the topics we discussed. And I would also highlight that Manta really strives to be usable, not just by the technical users, by data engineers, but also by the business users. And to that, these visualization perimeters right here are actually very important. For instance, depending on your use case, you may want to specify what level of detail you want to look at. What I mean by that is that if your use case is going to, for instance, be which data is going into my risk report, or am I using all of those data sets in my reports about sales? something similar you're not going to be yet maybe yet you're not going to be interested in all of the transformations necessarily you're just going to be going is this data being used in the 
final report. In which case, you don't really need to see attribute level lineage, transformation lineage, level lineage. You're fine with just seeing it from high level, which, which systems, which um, schemas the data is coming from. But on the other hand, if I were actually, let's say, the BI developer of the report or a data scientist, I may want to know that because very likely a common question is going to be, okay, so now you've proven that you're using those data sets. We want to know if you're how you're calculating it and what you do with that, in which case you may require high level of detail. And data lineage pipelines, of course, can get very complex. And through for these purposes, for specifying the use case and getting the easiest graph to understand, we provide various parameters further, not just detail, direction, indirect lineage, visualization, filtering options, which Manta comes with some pre-configured, some configurable, and also even steps of lineage, which is the number of objects from the initially selected one. So I'll set this to six, and let's take a look at the lineage itself. Once again, I would like to highlight that due to time restrictions, I will be only showing, let's say, um, a small handful of Manda's capabilities. And of course, for more, you will, we can, uh, there are also further possibilities, but let's take a look at what we have right here. So what we can see is that the lineage is provided in a form of a graph where the nodes refer to the objects in our environment, such as the tables, the views, the procedures, and the edges between them denote flow of data. As we can see right here, we can also see that the nodes themselves have different color coding. In the center branch of this graph, we're looking at peach or red colored objects. In the top branch, we're looking at light blue as well as light green. In the top branch of this graph, we're looking at a darker shade of green as well as the light one previously. And what this color coding actually represents are different technologies, meaning that in the center, what we have here are Oracle related objects where the data is being extracted by an Informatica Parse Center workflow, which is then somehow being transformed and pushed into a Microsoft SQL database. And similar to that in the bottom branch, we can see an SSIS package or project pushing data into a Microsoft SQL database. So already, even without investigating in depth what exactly our environment looks like or how it behaves, I only know that the table I initially selected, CRM client, which we have right here, is actually fairly important to the to our environment, considering not only that it is being used in its own system for various purposes, we can find out what those are, but at the same time is being picked up by an ETL tool and pushed into a completely different database and also by another ETL tool. So there's two different data integration tools picking the data up, putting it somewhere else, and also it is being used internally. Now, if I want to know exactly how the data is being used, I can definitely do so. And actually, let's open the detail up a bit more. Let's take a look at attribute level lineage. So right here, we have the CRM client table. In the middle of this butterfly, there is an import procedure. Let's op open that one as well to attribute level. And on the right side, we have a table called party. So right here, of course, with the number of edges, the number of relationships, the lineage is getting quite convoluted. However, if we simply select any attribute, we will see the lineage very nicely highlighted. In the blue color, we see the upstream lineage where the data is coming from. And in red color, we see the downstream lineage. Now, of course, this can be, this isn't that helpful when we're talking just table, procedure table, because of course, it is not trivial to find this out. Somebody would need to go through the code, but usually the engineers can manage the real value. This kind of highlighting is across the entire data lineage graph. So if your questions about data pipeline in a certain report may actually be going all the way to the upstream systems, they may be going to the ETL layer, they may be going to the data warehouse layer, or maybe just in the report, but you can very easily see everything nicely highlighted. You can also do the same for the whole table level lineage, which can also be really nice because, for instance, sometimes the question doesn't really have to be what data am I using or what, what happens to it. It can also be something along the lines of which data am I not using. And for instance, I can see that with respect to this party table, I am in no capacity using the attributes validate, id counter, validity date. 
which can be really helpful to me because truth be told, I may have just discovered a bug now because ID country, that may actually be information that I want to keep in a party table because maybe I have various employees, maybe I keep vendors in the party table who can be from various countries and I want to keep that information. But as I can see, I just have no way to access it directly if I only use the party table. So that can be very helpful. Now, I would like to take a look at two other capabilities of Manta, which can be really helpful and which I believe go really nicely to the topic that Gary and Manrick were discussing. The first of which being transformation logic. So, of course, it's incredibly helpful to be able to see the data dependencies, the impact of the data and really where it's going. But a common question as a follow up is also what happens to the data, not just where it's going, but really what happens to it. How is it transformed, if it is transformed in any way? And that's something that Manta can definitely highlight. Actually, not only can Manta show you directly the source code of the procedure and guide you to the interesting clauses where these transformations happen, but what's far nicer than that is that it can even show you the transformation logic on attribute level. So if you want to see, for instance, this birth date attribute, if anything interesting happens to it, you can see that directly in Manta. So you can see that the value of birth date, which is loaded into the party table, is the result of the NVL function call taken, meaning that either it's one value or the other. And in case of the other, it's actually constant. So I would know that I could not see a null value. However, a null value could still be represented there, which for any kind of BI needs is very, very necessary information to be aware of. Of course, the transformations can be far, far more complex. So any kind of these kinds of questions are, of course, also very difficult to answer because they do require to fully go through the code, understand not just the pipeline, really where the data is located, but really understand properly the code, what happens. And due to the number of constants changes, because truth is code changes all the time, even documentation may sometimes be too short. And that's really something difficult to handle completely manually. Which nicely brings me to the second capability of Manta that I would like to highlight, which is historical lineage. So as I was mentioning just now, not only does the amount of metadata grow, not only is it complex, but it also changes over time, which doesn't necessarily mean anything bad. <laughs> that's really just how things are. The environment evolves. And truth is that that's something that commonly is very important to understand. For instance, Let's just say that you would have a certain report in the environment and the report suddenly stops working either completely or just starts giving the craziest numbers. Now, what that means or has to mean is that something must have changed and either it could be that the report is no longer correct or it could be that something has happened in the data warehouse in itself. It could be that the ETL job has been changed or it hasn't been run or anything similar. It could be something about the upstream systems. It could just be that they changed a name of an attribute and you no longer can get it. Even such a simple change of the model can have completely devastating effects on with respect to how the entire data pipeline works. And that is something that we can very nicely see with Manta. So right now in the top right, we can see we're looking at revision 18.18, .18, which is describing the environment for November, for October 2020. But we can compare that against, let's say, November 2018. So each time Manta runs the scan, that scan is saved as a particular revision, ensuring that we understand what the environment looked like at a specific point in time. So let's take a look at what this looks like when visualized. We can take an example from, let's say, Microsoft SQL this time. And let's take a table here called party. Let's set the detail to high just so that we can see exactly how that changes the visualization itself together with certain filters. And let's see what this is going to look like. So immediately right off the bat, we can see that the color coding previously representing the technologies or the systems is no longer there. Instead, everything appears to be in grayscale. However, once I zoom out, I can see that on the right side, there is a note in green. If I zoom in, I can see that it is representing a report 
called customers implemented SSRS. And I can see that the green color represents that it's new, meaning that it is present in the environment with the newer revision, but was not there previously. So that was a certain change. And on the left side, I can see the same thing on an attribute level. So I can see that certain attributes are highlighted in green and some of them are highlighted in red. For instance, the date birth attribute has been deleted, meaning it is no longer there. There could also be the yellow color representing the modification, let's say change of data type. And in this case, this is actually looking fairly trivial or simple. If I take a look at exactly what happened here, currently the provider of data for this date birth attribute is an attribute called bdate, whereas previously it was, if I click here, date birth, which is no longer there. So very likely the only thing that has changed in the environment is just a change of naming convention or a change of the model. But still, if there is a procedure, if there is a view which explicitly defines this, it is no longer going to be able to pick the data up. And if that procedure loads the data up for a certain table or a view, which then is accessed by a report, then neither is the report going to work. So even though this potentially is a really minor change, it can still have very, very large effects on the environment itself. And those, that would be it regarding the demo itself. Awesome. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your knowledge and experience. So if there's anyone in the crowd who has a question, now is to put them into the chat. I'll also share the full case study with you so you can easily read it if you want to in a full length. It's now, you should see it in the white banner on the right side. And in the meantime, I just have a last question to Menrik, and that is, is how do you link uh, lineage to business outcomes? Uh, what business issue does lineage typically solve for you? Um, it's a good question. Um, the main the main business outcome that we're that we're gaining from Manta is is a thing called just a reduction in the amount of um, man capacity and capacity time it takes from individuals to um, implement something like Manta or to do manual lineage analysis or downstream impact assessments or to manually identify um, how, what data is critical within your environment. Manta automatically allows you to detect that. Um, it, it, it shortens the time that it takes to um, identify what the impact of a, of a data change could be. So there's massive, massive gains in capacity cost. Um, and that obviously there's some opportunity costs linked to that. Um, with the reduction of time, where it typically would have taken someone two or three days to do an impact assessment, it takes you 25 minutes or 30 minutes to do it now. So you've got two days available for an analyst to to create additional insights. Um, it it just increases the time to create insights. Um, it, oh, sorry, it actually decreases the time to create insights, and it actually makes the time to to gather these insights and identify them quicker. Um, so there's, there's massive gains and, and those are the two main things. It just decreases the time to, to, to create insights and it helps you to identify what insights is available and identify what data is critical with the environment. Obviously, the impact assessment component is massive. Thank you. Thank you for this. I can also see there were some questions already asked in the chat, but you were proactive and answered them all. So that's great. Thank you for this. I uh, would just add to the questions. Um, mm -hmm. I have noticed that one of the questions was going towards um, whether we support a certain technology. Um, in this case, it was ODI, but of course it makes complete sense to um, have this question. So I will share my screen once again. And what you can see here is the website getmanta.com. And of course, we have a lot of uh, materials on our website that can be very interested, but interesting. But with respect to the technologies that Manta can scan, you can see that directly here for platform supported scanners. And um, in case of ODI as an ETL tool, it is located right here under data integration. So you are going to be able to see that for ODI Oracle data integrator, we do mention the scanner here. You also, we also mention from a high level perspective, what, which parts of the technology we scan. So for instance, if you would be interested in knowing, um, let's just say, or um, I think Microsoft SQL would be a nice example. If you would be interested in exactly what technologies we, um, what 
other technologies we support and what subset of the technology itself we analyze and scan, you would be able to see it here as well. Okay, thank you for the addition. Uh, I don't so see yeah, any. I think this is worth, it just, there was, the question was asked around business terms and just for the broader audience, I think it's worth mentioning that that one of the, the outcomes at, at Capitech was to integrate Manta with the business catalog. So, you know, Manta really focuses on delivering this in-depth technical integration and harvesting multiple different technologies and delivering the technical lineage. But we then would bring that into a data catalog of which we connect with a whole bunch um, to, to bring in the business uh, links and the, and the business terms and, and that business lineage. So just, you know, it is possible and there's a lot of off-the-shelf adapters to allow us to do that. We were up and running in Capitec in three months. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, do you have any comments to this? Or, okay, everyone is set? That's great. If there are any further questions, please feel free to either message me, you all should have my email, or just reach out to us at getmanta.com or at masterita.co.za. So we'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Okay, and with that, I'll wrap it up. Thank you all for your time and have a great day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.